Okay, folks, so for this video, what we're going to do is we're going to answer uh, Human Ross's question, can you solve a nonlinear elliptic PDE? Um, and he sent me this link here in the comments, and here's the equation here, u double prime minus u prime plus u squared equals cosine squared minus sine x plus cosine x. And so the reason why this is tougher is because normally you would plug in your finite difference technique and then solve for u, but you can't because there's a, a, a squared term here. Um, I have a video where I explain why it doesn't work, but um, basically I can give you the, uh, the, the quick answer so you don't have to go watch that whole nonlinear FDM. No, it looks like I already made that. Um, edit nonlinear FD, FDM. There we go. Um, so basically, our solution is u double prime minus u prime plus u squared equals um, cosine squared of x. Uh, what is it? Uh, minus sine of x. Sine of x plus cosine of x. And um, this really just equals the forcing function f of x. And so if we use finite differencing, what we have is we have u of i plus 1 minus 2 times u of i plus u of i minus 1. And that's all divided by uh, dx squared. And then u prime is u of i plus 1. And if we use central differencing, we have u of i minus 1 all over dx, uh, 2 times dx like that. And we have to use central differencing because there are left and right boundary uh, conditions. So if we plug this in, we're going to and and we solve for everything, we're going to end up getting something like uh, 2, sorry, 2 times dx cubed. Um, and basically what I did is I I'm, I'm multiplying my 2 dx cubed on both sides. So I'm substituting these two equations in here. And so you get um, all of this copy here and the dx squared cancels so you get 2dx and then you get minus u prime so you're going to get all of this stuff and then this is going to be times 2dx cubed but the 2dx is going to cancel so you're just going to get dx squared and then you're going to get plus u of i squared oh, and I hate how it does that I'm going to get rid of this common so you can see it um, equals uh, f of uh, f i f of i where uh, f of i is equal to f of x of i like that okay and so then the issue is is what happens when you solve for u of i well you can't there's a u of i here and there's a u of i squared here and so unfortunately you can't do it this way um, you can try and use the Pythagorean theorem but as I show in a follow-up video for this it, it, that method doesn't work so the method that I elected to do was to actually create a vector z. I'm going to call it u and u prime, which means that z prime is u prime u double prime. So then that means that z prime is u prime, which we already know, and then u double prime, which is f of x plus u prime minus u squared, well, just like that. And so what I do is I make a function up here, nonlinear FDM. I'm going to do a clear CLC, a close all. And then I'm going to put all of this in a function down here. And I'm going to say function Z prime equals um, derives Z. And I'm going to say U is Z of 1. U prime is Z of 2. That's this line of code here. And then Z prime is equal to u prime minus, or sorry, semicolon, f of x. And so what I need to do is I need x to be an input, f of x plus u prime minus u squared, like that. And so then I need a function out equals f of x. And so now I need a function for x. And so f of x is out equals cosine of x squared minus, 
let me make sure my parentheses are in the right spot here. Minus sine of x plus cosine of x, just like that. And so hopefully you can see where we're going with this. Um, all I'm gonna I'm gonna do I did I think I did RK4 the first time I tried this I'm just gonna try this with Euler's method just because you can always just code Euler's method I mean the RK4 with Euler's method so basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna integrate the equations from the left using the left boundary condition and then I'm gonna integrate from the right using the right boundary conditions and then I'm going to average them together using a weighted average. Okay? And then I'm going to plot it. So I'm going to do figure, plot, and I want x, vec, comma, u, actual. And then I'm going to throw a hold on plot x, vec, comma, u, approx. And I'm going to do this one in, in like that. And I'm going to throw an x label down. This is going to be x in meters, and then y label is going to be y. Um, I don't know what the units are, or u. I don't know what the units are, so I'm just going to say non-dimensional. Okay. Um, so the first step is to um, discretize the bar, and so we have um, n equals, let's say, 100 spaces. We're going to say l equals 10 meters. And so x vec then equals lin space 0 l n. And then dx equals x vec of 2 minus x vec of 1. Okay? Now I need my boundary conditions. So what is the actual solution? Well, uh, you can somehow, uh, Human Ross, uh, okay, whoop. He somehow solved this, and he told me the answer. Um, it's somewhere in here. I'm just going to pause it. Okay, so I, I found the actual solution. So the actual solution is just negative cosine of u actual, uh, like that. Uh, sorry, not u actual, x vec. And so if we run this code, it should it'll, it'll throw an error at line 38 because u approx doesn't exist. But here's our function here. Um, and so what we're going to do is we're going to make, uh, we're going to now integrate from the left. So we're going to say UL approx equals zero times U actual. And then we're going to say UL approx of one equals U actual of one. And that's our left boundary condition. Uh, I assume, I assume this is known. Okay. Then we're going to integrate from the right. And so I have ur approx equals 0 times u actual. And then ur approx of end equals u actual of end. So again, this is our right boundary condition. And then I'm going to average them together. So the averaging is going to be interesting, right? Because I don't want to just do u approx equals 0 0.5 times ul approx plus 0 0.5 times ur approx because that would be a perfect average. But the thing is, is I want to weight the two such that I have a weighting function for the left and a weighting function for the right and what I want it to do is I want it to be 1 minus x vec over L. And so that means, so maybe, I'll, maybe I should plot these. And so this will be one, 1 minus weight R like that. And so what this will do, I'm going to do, I'm going to drop another figure down. And I'm going to plot, um, shoot. Let's see, uh, x vec comma weight L, and then plot x vec, and I would throw a hold on, plot x vec weight R. And so if I, no, it looks like I got a, uh, oops, that's supposed to be an L. So here, here's my weighting function here, right? So here's my weighting functions. And so you'll, you'll notice here, uh, maybe I should throw some legends in here. Let me see, a legend, 
uh, left, weight, right, weight, and then down here I'm going to throw a legend, um, actual, numerical. Okay, so here's my left weight. So what that means is I'm going to fully believe the left coordinate and not believe the right function out over here. And then I'm going to do the same. I'm going to do the opposite with this one. So right now I have a perfect average between the two with using 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And you'll notice that my boundary conditions aren't correct. And that's because I set every both of them to zero. And, and maybe what I should do is plot my left approximation, plot x vec ul approx um, in green. I'll just do solid. And then plot x vec u, ur approx in, I'll just do uh, magenta. Uh, let's see, so this is left and this is right. And so what you'll see is over here, the right approximation is correct here at the boundary conditions, but the left one's not. So when you average them together, you get this point. If you scroll all the way over to the left boundary condition, you'll see the same thing happening. Uh, you'll see the same thing happening. The left approximation is, is correct at the boundary conditions, but the right one's not. So when you average them together, you get halfway in between. So what I want to do is I want to actually use these weights instead. So weight L dot times UL approx plus weight not work dot times. There we go. Weight R dot times. We'll see. And there we go. And so now what you'll see is that the, okay, maybe I should plot the numerical one last so we can see it. And then move this. I'll say uh, averaged, how about that, oop. Okay, so now you'll see that the dashed red line is here. And so the when you average the two together, the boundary conditions match up. So now we know that our boundary conditions will match up when we use this weighting function. So now what we need to do is integrate this. So we're gonna say, since we're doing, let's do the easy one first, we're gonna left integrate. And so I'm going to say 4 IDX is 1, 2, length of X, VEC, minus 1. And then Euler's method is just um, Z, Z of I plus 1 equals Z of I plus uh, Z prime of I times DX, like that. So it's just, just, just how we, we, we think it is. And so um, the one issue is that we're going to need... Um, initial conditions for the derivative as well when we do it this way. And so um, we're going to have to have u prime actual, and this is going to be what sine of x vec, I'm pretty sure. And so then what we'll do is we'll say um, ul approx is. I see your prime actual. So what we're going to do is we're going to say ZL approx is 0 times U actual, 0 times U actual. And then we're going to need ZL approx of all comma 1 is equal to U actual of 1, and then U prime actual of 1, like that. And uh, it looks like we can actually get rid of this here. And what we'll do is we'll move it down here and we'll say UL approx equals ZL approx of um, one comma all. So it's essentially the first row. So the first row of ZL is U and then the second row is the derivative. And so Euler's method just says ZL approx of all comma IDX plus one equals ZL approx of all comma IDX plus Z prime. And how do we get Z prime? Well, remember our derives function down here. So it's just derives of ZL approx all comma IDX. And then we need X of IDX as well. Um, so let's run that. Uh, looks like we got an error. Uh, what is our error? Uh, X doesn't exist. It's because it's X vec. 
There we go. And it looks like um, our system blew up, so it means that, again, we're using Euler's method. We don't have enough discretization points. Uh, looks like we still don't have enough. I might just have to move straight to RK, R, RK4. If the, I didn't, I did, I did RK4 last time. I just figured that Euler's would be okay. Okay, yeah, this isn't going to work. Okay, so we're just going to have to do uh, RK4 right away. Um, so the RK4 algorithm, K1, is derives of ZL approx all comma IDX comma X of IDX, X vec of IDX. Um, K2 is derives, um, let me make this simpler, ZI is ZL approx of I comma IDX, XI is X vec of IDX. Um, all right, K1 is ZI comma XI. K2 is ZI plus K1 times DX over two, XI plus DX over two. K3 is derives ZI plus K2 times DX over two, comma XI plus DX over two. K4 is derives ZI plus K3 times DX, comma XI plus DX. Phi is one six times k one plus two times k two plus two times k three plus k four. Uh, whew, man, this is a lot. And then finally, Z L approx of all comma i d x plus one equals Z i plus v times d x. Here we go. Boom. There we go. Now we're talking. Okay. So let's see. So. It looks like the, uh, let's make the blue line dashed. There we go, okay. So let's make our time step, uh, let's discretize a little less. Uh, it looks like we blew up there. There we go, um, yeah. So you see, here's the red, the, the blue is the actual, the green we integrated from the left, and as we got farther and farther away from our initial condition, we started to deviate. Um, and so that's the point of having the purple line, and then we uh, average them together, and since we haven't integrated the purple one, our boundary conditions are correct, but still not quite right. Okay, so now we're gonna integrate from the left. And so we're gonna essentially just copy and paste this. Copy, paste, and I'm gonna just go in here and change everything to an R, 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 except now I have to integrate from the right, so I have to do end, 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 and then I have to start at the end, integrate backwards, and stop at two. And then my algorithm is Z minus one is minus, like that, everything's a minus. So then this is R, this is fine, this is fine, but now I have to subtract all of my derivatives. Because I'm integrating backwards. And then this is going to be ZR approx is IDX minus 1, minus phi, you R approx, you R approx. And then if I hit go, look at that. Well, it looks like integrating from the right was actually way better. Um, it looks so. It looks like we can actually reduce our time step. Let's try, or I keep saying time step. Let's say, uh, yeah, I don't know, seventy. Yeah, it looks integrating from the left seems to do really poorly. Um, integrating from the right seems to do really well all the way to the very end. That, that's interesting to me. Um, but anyway, essentially, if you do like a thousand time steps, your solutions converge uh, perfectly. Uh, I realize this was a really long video. Um, but I'm here to help. Uh, if you need me to break this down a little bit more, just uh, post some stuff in the comments and I'll try and respond as soon as I can. Um, so again, here's our equation. Here's u double prime. Here's u prime using finite difference. Um, then we have the discretization of the bar. We have uh, x vec and dx. We have our boundary conditions. Uh, well, here's this is actually not our boundary conditions. This is our uh, our actual solution here, and then um, here we integrate from the left, and so we set up our boundary conditions using the actual. Uh, we'd use the RK4 algorithm for accuracy, 
and then we do the same thing from the right, except everything is minus now. So we have minus, 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 where everything's going backwards. Um, and then we use a weighted average where uh, our weights uh, take into account the fact that our, we know that our boundary conditions are correct for the respective sides that we integrate from. Uh, we do that weighted average where we weight the averages together and we plot everything. Here is our derivatives function down here. So we've got um, u prime, we got z coming in, which is just u and u prime, and then z prime is u prime, and then this equation up here solved for uh, u double prime, which is just f plus u prime minus u squared. And then here's our function of x, which is just a forcing function. And then that's it. We have play, and our solutions converge perfectly assuming your discrete step is small enough. All right, good luck.